Today we're taking a first look at the stunning Curve Downrock. Curve is based out of Australia. I know a lot of you viewers are from Australia. Shout out to Australia. I hope to be able to ride your amazing country one day. This is a titanium frame and this is their most aggressive hardtail. But they didn't do what a lot of companies do when they make aggressive hardtails. They didn't just throw the biggest fork on it, make it crazy slack and just overdo it. You can tell whoever designed this really knows bikes and really knows hardtails. It's based around a 130 fork, which I think is the sweet spot. It's got a short rear end, which I think is the sweet spot, but it also scales and grows with each size. So the size small has the shortest chainstay and the shortest reach. And as you go up to a medium, which this is, the chainstay grows a little bit longer, not a crazy amount. It's still a very short chainstay as the reach grows and then larger and larger. That keeps the balance the same from frame size to frame size. We have absolutely flawless looking welds. This frame is made in Asia and that's where we're seeing the most beautiful welds these days is coming out of Taiwan. And even some of those Chinese companies are building some really, really nice looking titanium frames with perfect looking welds. This yoke area is absolutely stunning. One of the best I've ever seen. We have a threaded T47 bottom bracket. I am a huge fan of that. It gives us more area there. We can fit bigger bearings in. I wish everything was T47. I tried to get that going on my Binary Maniac, but we just didn't have the clearance room for it with the chain ring and the massive tires that I wanted to fit. But I am loving seeing more companies go to T47. It still fits all your normal cranks. You just get a slightly different bottom bracket that's got a bigger shell to support those bigger bearings better. We have full external cable routing. We have a 180 mil post mount rear. I love seeing that. So many companies say, this is our hardcore hardtail and we've got a 160 mil rear rotor and you got to run adapters to run 180. This tells you that they mean business to just go straight to the 180 mil. So it's based around a 130 mil fork, but you can run a 150 mil fork if you like. You know, I love titanium frames. This frame has a cool blend of bead blast where they kind of, it's like sandblasting, they media blast it. So it's got like this matte finish up here and then it fades to a polished rear. Now, one thing I love about titanium frames is when you get a scratch on them, you can buff them out with scotch Bright pad. But if you have a blasted frame, you can't do that. So you do have to be a little bit more careful with a bead blasted frame, but man, that looks absolutely incredible. Typically, titanium frames are lighter than steel frames. Kind of the benchmark I set for steel frames is six pounds and lower is a light steel frame. This frame came in at 4.7 pounds, so uh, 1.29 pounds lighter than most light steel frames. That's nice and light. It's not as light as even my Marin Team Marin 2 or my Spot Rocker Carbon. Most carbon frames are going to come in lighter than this, but you know, the goal of a hardcore hardtail like this is not to get the absolute lightest bike on the planet. It's to get a light bike that also feels solid and has a great ride feel. So I don't mind that this isn't approaching carbon fiber territory and 4.7 pounds is still very, very light for a frame with seat collar, headset cups, and rear axle. We've got a water bottle cage in here, a water bottle cage underneath. It looks like the cable routing goes on the bottom of the down tube. That's not my all time favorite and that's the only niggle I have with this. And when you're riding it, it doesn't matter. The only time you really notice that is when you put it on a shuttle pad on a tailgate and it's pushing on the cables there. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for this. On paper, this thing looks to be everything right about hardtails today. Let's get some parts on this thing and see what it looks like as a complete bike. Like I mentioned, this comes with a T47 bottom bracket. It's still a 30, you can get a 30 mil spindle or a dub 29 mil spindle or a 24 mil, which is like Shimano stuff but it's a bigger shell. I think it's sturdier, it's stiffer, it's not a noticeable amount of weight. I also like that these bearings have a little bit more room in there. I love this standard. I hope it becomes a normal thing. It doesn't change our cranks or anything. All it changes is the bottom bracket you buy. So that's a standard I'm willing to adopt for, I mean, if you're building a frame, you're gonna have to buy a new bottom bracket anyway. So it doesn't cost you any extra money. You can still use all your old parts except your bottom bracket. For cranks, we're going with 5 dev. Would you go black or raw? Ooh, I think I'm going to go black on this one. I want to hear in the comments which is more your style. 
If you haven't seen my video already, if cranks can be supple, check it out. A few of my viewers have responded to that they've seen a decrease in harshness on their hardtails when they're running five dev cranks. It's not that the cranks are flexy per se, but micro vibrations just seem to go away compared to uh, those titanium E-wings that I have. I need to do more crank comparisons and compare these to like a GX crank and like a XT crank. But compared to carbon cranks and those titanium E-wings, these cranks are noticeably less harsh when riding. And on a hardtail, I think that's actually a great upgrade. So one other advantage about five dev cranks is that each arm comes off of the spindle. So what that means is you can swap spindles. So one of these is a 29 and one of the 30 mil. This is a 29 mil bottom bracket. So I'm gonna run the 29 mil spindle, which is a dub spindle. If I ever need a super boost crank set, I just get the right spindle and I get to keep my same arms. That means these are lifetime arms. So you just get the spindle that you need. If bottom bracket standards change, you can just change the spindle, keep your arms. Also, five devs have more clearance near the thread interface here. A lot of other companies have, you know, an extra centimeter sticking out there. And that means more rock strikes. So I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. They're made in the U.S., it's a company run by mountain bikers. They are passionate people. I've got a lot of videos about them when I go visit their factory and see how they're made. Really cool stuff coming out of 5Dev. They also have tons of lengths. It's one of the few options that are super light in the short lengths. I'm running 165s. I've also got a set of 160s that I like more for my spinny, pedally, bikepacking stuff. But 165s with a 32 tooth oval is my go-to for 99% of my bikes. So I love these five dev cranks. You can get 5% off all five dev products using code hardtail party. I've got a link in the description below, but we're gonna go black on this one. I think that's gonna match the graphics here really well. And for chain ring, as always, I'm using an absolute black oval chain ring. This is a 32 tooth. I love absolute black stuff. For my bottom bracket, I'm running a wheels manufacturing bottom bracket. These are also made in the USA. I've had extremely good luck with them. They're my favorite bottom brackets. This one's not an angular contact bearing. They don't have a 29 mil angular contact bearing at the time of filming. So my 30 mils are angular contact and this is just regular old bearing here. But they do use enduro bearings and really nice seals. Some of my wheels manufacturing bottom brackets are over three years old with zero issues on them. So I'm a huge fan of these if you're looking for a nice bottom bracket. Anytime you go oval, you have to remember that they're taller so like this is a 32 oval it's taller than a normal 32 so if your frame says has clearance for a 32 tooth chain ring it's only going to fit a 30 oval thankfully this down rock has clearance for bigger than a 32 Whew, it's close so that you can probably get a normal 34 on there 34 tooth chain ring or a 32 oval i'm so lucky that companies like wheels manufacturing five dev an absolute black sent parts in to be reviewed on this channel makes my job a lot easier. I'm one of the only reviewers that's reviewing frames where I put my own parts on it. That takes a ton of time. It's very expensive. It definitely slows me down in these reviews. So I appreciate companies that help me out because it's expensive buying parts for a whole bunch of frames to build them up. Whew, that looks good. Man, this thing looks so good with the black on tie. Looks like a little dirt jumper right now. This thing's cool looking. Uh, all right, I'm running a 130 mil Helm, Cane Creek Helm Mark II. That's my go-to fork. I love this fork. I probably had this fork on 40 different bikes that I've reviewed. And for wheels, we're going with Curves Carbon Dirt Hoops. They are a 25i rim. They were a little bit hard to get tires onto. Uh, they didn't seat very well and it was really tight on the bead. I've actually lost air a couple times and I've really had to slosh the sealant around in there. Now they're holding air well, so I don't think I'm gonna have a problem, but I thought that was worth mentioning. The initial tubeless setup was a little bit trickier than most. These wheels are light though. Beautiful bladed spokes. And 25i, I think will work just great for up to like a 2.3. I usually run 30i's on my 2.3's, but I'm sure this will be just fine. I always appreciate it when companies can send me their parts to feature on the build because because when you buy a curve you have the option to buy it with these wheels so i'm excited to get some experience on these wheels up front i'm running a 2.3 specialized eliminator t7 
It's kind of my go-to trail front tire. I know a lot of people like them on the back. I love them on the front with a specialized ground control rear. It's coming together. This thing looks so cool with this bead blasted finish and the black accents. The attention to detail on this frame is insane from the bead blasting, the incredible welds, just all these little finishing touch details like their little logo etched into the brake mount. It's just the little things that go a long way on this. All right, this is a 2.6 tire on a 33i rim on a Hunt Enduro wide. And we've got clearance. We've got 5 mil clearance all the way around. So in here, we got a good 7 mil clearance at the chainstay, which is awesome for how short these chainstays are. And up here, we got about 4 mil. Let's see if a 2.8 fits. All right, here's a 2.8 on a 40i rim. That's huge. 29 plus is so much bigger than people realize until they see it in person. And this bike's not designed for this, but we got to do a little experimental. That's one of these values of my first look videos as I try to show you what tires fit and how much clearance they have. Let's see if it squeaks. It's technically not rubbing, but it's too close. I would not run it. Let me show you. Interestingly enough, there actually is clearance in the chain state area. We probably got three mil clearance on each side. It's up here at the seat stay bridge. Let's see. We've only got one mil clearance there. Interesting, they could have fit two eights if they'd uh, use a little thinner tubing or gone a little wider there, but I know that wasn't the goal for this. I love tan walls on a tie bike. I need to find a tire sponsor so I can experiment with more tires and get some cool looking tan walls. So we're putting the two threes on. I like two threes for trail riding. I feel like they dig down a little deeper than two sixes. Like when there's less traction, two sixes float pretty well and they get pretty good traction, but I feel like uh, they're, these bikes are a little more precise on two threes. And a good meaty fast rolling two three like this is just wonderful. It accelerates quick, it picks up speed quick, it, it digs in on the corners and it just gives the bike a light, zippy, exciting feel. Two sixes are fun too, they just feel a little different. If I'm gonna go plus, I wanna go 2.8 to 3.0 to get the full benefit of plus. Uh, so most of my bikes are either 2.3 or 3.0 or 2.8 somewhere in there. Oh, beautiful, we got DT350 hubs on here. We've got the regular uh, star ratchet in there, but for 120 bucks, you can upgrade to the 54 tooth star ratchet to get really quick engagement. That's what I would do if these were my wheels. All right, it's all built up and it looks stunning. The bead blasted titanium looks so cool. It shows fingerprints really easily. I've already wiped it down two or three times, so you're gonna wanna keep this thing clean. You, Like I said, you can't just scotch bright this. If you buff it, it's gonna look more polished like the back end. Man, it's got a sharp look though. I love the logo. I love the attention to detail, all the little things that they put into this. Now, Curve is an Australian company, so when you look at the price of these, you need to remember they're Australian dollars, not United States dollars. So it's going to be a bit of a shocker if you think they're United States dollars. So this frame comes in around $26.50. That's a lot of money, but guess what? That's what tie frames are coming in these days. A hand-built tie frame in the U.S. is starting to push $4,500 to $5,000. It's so expensive to build with tie. So... This is a luxury bike. This is not your bargain basement. I've only got 1500 bucks to spend on a bike. What should I get? That is not this bike. This is a lifelong bike for somebody who knows exactly what geo they want and who wants something that is an absolute stunner when you see it. I don't love the cable routing under the down tube, but they've done a nice job of it. It means my cables were about six to eight inches longer than on my other bikes. So I had to get a longer brake actually to make it fit on here. So if you're swapping parts from another bike, keep in mind you may need longer cables just because it takes the longest possible route to go there, down the down tube, under the bottom bracket, under the chain stays, and then up to the seat stay for the brake. I don't love the cable routing, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. I prefer it inside the front triangle, like I said, for shuttling or picking it up. I don't like these getting crunched. However, if you're bike packing and you wanna strap stuff around or put frame bags in there, this is a really nice clean look. If you're not using shuttle pads, this is not gonna cause a problem for you. I don't love the way that it routes under the bottom bracket. I would have routed it over the bottom bracket on everything, personally. Actually, I would have gone under the top tube and just shot straight down there. 
I think that's a cleaner routing, but every company is different and that's more personal preference at this time. One thing I would love to start seeing from frame manufacturers that sell frame only to customers is their recommended cable routing on the frame. I, I just look at these sometimes and I think, huh, did they mean for this cable to go here or over there? And I kind of try both and I don't feel great about either. I would just love to see little tips and tricks like that. That's some of the things that you know, a lot of frame builders don't think about when the customers got it and they're building it up. They may not know the ideal way to route it. I didn't, so I had to experiment a little bit. The headset that they supply with this needs a special crown race on the bottom. It comes with it, but I tried to throw this fork on with my Cane Creek 40 series crown race. It did not fit. It got bound up. So you can't use your own crown race if you run this. Not a problem at all since it comes with it. I just thought I would mention that. If your headset's binding, you're probably not running the crown race that it came with. The fit and finish of this bike and quality control is top notch. The threads looked perfect. There was no weird like unfinished edges. Inside all the tubes looked spectacular. So whoever's building these frames is going the extra mile instead of just cranking them out as cheap as humanly possible. I'm really impressed with the weld quality. Some of the finest welds I've ever seen. Love the finishing. It's just top notch. This is one of the most refined, beautiful frames I've ever had in the shop. All right, let's get this thing on the geo meter to see if actual geo numbers match the geo chart online. First up is stack. Stack is a huge 644. That's a super tall stack, especially for a 130 fork. Love it. That means I'm not going to be hunched over. I'm going to be sitting upright, which I love. 67 mil bottom bracket drop. That's a pretty big bottom bracket drop for 130 hardtail. I'll bet this thing's going to corner like it's on rails. The lower your bottom bracket, the more you feel in the bike. But it's a little bit less playful and poppy. It's harder to bunny hop a low bottom bracket bike. We'll see how this rides. This is going to be interesting. Rear center. Holy cow. 415. That's crazy. Chain stay. 425. Awesome. Reach is 440. That's a little shorter than I thought. Head angle's coming in at 63.9. That's why the reach is a little shorter. Interesting. Effective seat tube angle is 76.7. That's modern. Wow, that is a lot more modern than I thought it was going to be. They must be measuring actual seat tube on the geo chart. So that geo's really modern. The reach was a little shorter than I thought it would be by four mils. Now keep in mind my measurements aren't 100% exact and neither are geo charts on any bike company's website. If you missed my video, are geo charts accurate? Go look at that. I've measured four or five different bikes and the geo charts were all over the place compared to reality versus their actual charts. So what can we infer about this bike? I think it's going to be very planted and stable with that low bottom bracket. But since the rear end's so short, I think it's actually going to wheelie and manual and play really well. This seat angle is steeper than I thought based off its geo charts. This is more cutting edge, like the Binary Maniac, like the Canfield Yelly Screamy. This thing's going to be very, very close to my ideal geometry. It's very similar to the Binary Maniac as well. It's a little bit slacker than the Binary Maniac. Uh, reach is just a tad shorter, but I mean, they're all within like 3%. So with how much I love how the Binary Maniac rides, I have very, very, very high hopes for this thing. So that was a little bit surprising coming back from the Geometer. This was a full degree slacker than I expected. And sometimes those things are off a little or maybe they measured it with the fork at sag. Who knows? But this thing is shreddier than I thought. 440 mil reach with a 64 degree head angle and a 424, 425 chainstay. Holy cow, this thing is going to be super fun. Curve was way ahead of their time when they released this Geo, and I think they're onto something very, very special. And since the frame was so light at 4.71 pounds, this whole bike built up really light, really beautifully. The final weight was 27.66 pounds. That is up there with like my Thai Sherpa. This thing should feel super zippy and super quick. I'm really happy with a metal bike that comes in under 29 pounds, and under 28 is really good with pedals. I have high expectations for this. I really expect this to be one of the best hardtails I've ridden based on the geo, the build quality, the fit and finish, all the, the little things that they've thought of. This thing is an absolute stunner. I've ridden more modern hardtails than anyone on the planet now. 
and I love hardtails and I love sharing my opinions about them with you. That's why these videos are free and open to anybody. If you want to get extra nerdy and pick my brain on how bike A compares to bike B, or you want my opinion for what the best bike is for you and your budget, I have a bike consultation service. That's my main business. I'd be happy to help you out over there. I got a link in the description below. You sign up for a month at a time. We work together until you decide on the bike that you want, and then you cancel at any time, and you're able to pick my brain and save potentially thousands of dollars by buying the right bike for you instead of maybe the bike that the shop happens to still have on their floor that they're pushing real hard, telling you it's the best bike for you to get. I love helping people with that. If you're interested, sign up below. If not, feel free to keep enjoying my free videos. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.